In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a young woman in Nazareth named Mary. This opening line in today's gospel, especially the reference to an angel, is a tip-off that something momentous is about to happen. Just prior to this passage in the first chapter of Luke, the same angel Gabriel has frightened and confounded a childless man named Zechariah. The angel had appeared to him and announced the promise that his wife, Elizabeth, would give birth to a son against all odds and expectation. This surprising good news for Zechariah and Elizabeth, who was barren, in turn summons memories of other barren women in the Bible, women who were chosen by God to give birth against all odds. Women like Sarah, who became the mother of Isaac. Rebecca, who became the mother of Joseph. Hannah, who became the mother of the prophet Samuel. So when Luke tells us that an angel was sent to a woman in Nazareth, We might enter the story with Elizabeth and Sarah and Rebecca and Hannah in mind. Still, we need to pay attention to the differences in Mary's story. Mary's circumstances are different from those her foremothers in faith. Mary was young and unmarried, not old or barren. While Sarah and Rebecca and Hannah and Elizabeth longed for a child, having a baby was not Mary's immediate prayer or plan. The truth is that the angel Gabriel disrupted all of Mary's plans, and he turned her world upside down. About Christmas, our forefather in the faith, Martin Luther, said, There are three wonders here. One, that God should become a man. Another, that a virgin should have a child. And the third, that Mary believed. And the greatest of these, Luther said, is that Mary believed. In sending Gabriel to interrupt Mary's day and to disrupt her plans, God laid claim to Mary's life. And that young woman, instinctively and powerfully and poignantly witnessed to the consequences of believing. Here I am, servant of the Lord, she said. Let it be with me according to your word. We might ponder the implication of Mary's confession here. Here I am, Lord. 
Let it be with me according to your word, even though your word will turn my world upside down. Here I am, Lord, even though Joseph will be disappointed and hurt and angry. Let it be with me according to your word, even though family and friends will judge and condemn. Here I am, Lord, even though I will travel a dangerous road when nine months pregnant and give birth far from the comfort of home and family. Here I am, Lord, although my heart will break to see my son condemned a criminal and crucified in shame. Here I am, Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Reading Luke's gospel and pondering the message and knowing the story, I've been drawn to those words and what it means for any one of us to believe and to say yes to God's claim on our lives. For Mary saying yes to God turned her world upside down and in that turning, blessings came. Along with everything else she believed, Mary dared to believe that she was indeed favored of God and blessed. Mary's story says how blessed are we when believing turns our world upside down. The Lord blessed Mary with vision, with tenacious faith, with wonder and amazement, and with a mother's heart of love. The Lord was with her, and no one could take that away from Mary. She met an angel, she heard God's promises, and by the life-giving power of the Holy Spirit, she gave birth to God's possibilities for salvation and life. Through Mary, the Word became flesh and pitched a tent among us full of grace and truth. The Lord was with Mary, the Lord was with Mary to heal and restore her relationship with Joseph after he vowed to dismiss her quietly because of her pregnancy. The Lord was with Mary to open a door in the innkeeper's heart so that a barn door would be opened for sanctuary in Bethlehem. The Lord was with Mary to bless her through shepherd visitations and magi treasures. The Lord was with Mary to keep her family safe from Herod's murderous fear. The Lord was with Mary even at the foot of the cross as Jesus looked down to entrust her to the care of his disciple and friend John. In the Orthodox Christian tradition, so for the Greek Orthodox as an example, Mary has a special designation, a specific title that captures her mission and her role in God's plan for salvation. In the Orthodox tradition, Mary is Theotokos, the one who gives birth to God. She is the bearer of God, mother and giver of life. When Mary said, here I am, Lord, let it be with me according to your word, she proclaimed her willingness to give birth to God. And so she did, giving birth, yes, to a tiny baby that night in Bethlehem and giving birth to so much more as well. And here is what mystics and monks and God's faithful people have understood and believed for 2,000 years about Mary's witness and example. We are all called to give birth to God. Do we then with Mary dare to believe this? We are all called to give birth to God's creative and sustaining word in a dark and sin-filled world. We are all called to give birth to righteousness and peace. We are all called to give birth to God in our unique and spirit-inspired ways. We are all called to give birth to love, not to change the world all at once, but to love those sitting next to us and our next door neighbor and those in our immediate sphere of work and home and community and school. We are all called to give birth to God because the world needs God's redeeming love and grace. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, 
this day that is also Christmas Eve, what I know is this, God is always waiting to be born anew. God is waiting to be born anew in our lives, in our community, and in our world. God is waiting to be born in forgotten corners and in humble circumstances. God is waiting to be born in ways that surprise and amaze and astound. God is waiting to be born of ordinary men and women like Mary and Joseph and you. How blessed are we, how blessed are we when we open our lives to God's gracious and life-giving Holy Spirit. How blessed are we when we relinquish our hold on all that is safe and comfortable for the sake of the good news of Jesus Christ. How blessed are we when we embrace new possibilities and take risks for the sake of God's holy future. How blessed are we when we with Mary say yes to the power of God's spirit at work in our lives. How blessed are we when believing turns the world upside down. Mary understood this and so she sang, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my savior for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name. Mary gets to the heart of the matter for us today. Mary points beyond herself to the very heart of God. Mary tells us that it is God's very nature to turn the world upside down in order to heal and save this world. How blessed are we to be a part of this God's holy mission, to heal, to save, to bless, to redeem our world. Long ago, Mary gave birth to the promised one of God and he lived among us deep in the flesh of ordinary life. When we live in faith in this one named Jesus, we live in a realm of possibility and promise where God is always waiting to be born anew. In Jesus Christ, we are called to be in the world as if an angel or God's future really might break in at any moment. We are called to live as if we really and against all odds might give birth to a new thing from God. In this season, we give that one born of Mary a special name. Emmanuel, God with us. With Mary, we can say yes to God's claim on our lives. We can take risks for the gospel. We can face an unknown future because God is with us, Emmanuel, now until the end of the age. Emmanuel, God with us, will provide what we need. Do not be afraid, the angel of the Lord says for you have found favor with God, and nothing is impossible with this God. How blessed are we when we join Mary in believing this promise. Amen.